the 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 the, 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 there, there has been found in the molten metal the chemical evidence of thermite, uh, an incendiary used to cut through steel like a hot knife through butter. Uh, this is uh, found by Dr. Stephen Jones in several samples of the molten iron, and it is not melted steel, it is molten iron. There are also microspheres found throughout the dust. In fact, all, every dust sample collected by not only Dr. Jones, but by the uh, USGS, by uh, R.J. Lee finds these uh, iron-rich microspheres uh, tw 20 minutes away on the Brooklyn Bridge across the street in uh, Jeanette McKinley's apartment and on top of the high-rise uh, 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 two blocks away. All of these contain these iron-rich microspheres with potassium, manganese, I uh, iron, and aluminum. Uh, this is the chemical signature of thermite, this incendiary. Okay. All right. Richard, um you mentioned the environmental report by R.J. Lee uh, about contents of dust that mentioned these iron microspheres. In what context were they mentioning these spheres? Why were they talking about them? I'll give you some, I'll give you up some of my time for that. Uh, R.J. Lee found the iron-rich microspheres. If you look at this uh, photo here, in fact. Oh, we can't uh, see that. Just quickly, though, Richard, I do want some of my time. Why were they talking about it? They're talking about it because they didn't know what the hell it was. Uh, they had never seen anything like it. Uh, in fact, uh, FEMA can't... Okay, that's, that's, yeah. a, that's enough. That's all I need yeah. to hear. That's all I need to hear, and it's entirely false. They talked about it because those iron-rich microspheres were an expected product of the fires. They were looking for them as a signature of World Trade Center dust to differentiate it from the dust, the background dust in other buildings for environmental studies they were doing. Expected, no, actually, expected to be found. No it is, Richard, and, and if you say it's not true, you haven't read the report. There, there is no possible source for these iron-rich microspheres except for an aluminothermic reaction under extremely uh, pressurized conditions in which the surface, temp the surface tension forms these spheres into these tiny, uh, 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 th these spheres, some of which are hollow, uh, a as this molten iron cools. And what is in these spheres? All of them, aluminum, iron, potassium, manganese, this, again, is the chemical signature of thermite. Uh, absolutely may, not. May, you're may, absolutely may, wrong. May I suggest the possibility that you're both right, that these um, traces are representative of, of, of a thermite residue or thermite signature, uh, and because this is what was unique to World Trade Center and, and the, coll the collapse of those buildings, that's what was the key thing to look for if you were going to distinguish the fire damage uh, and debris from World Trade Center, from debris from everywhere else. Absolutely not, because all of the materials that Richard says was in these things were expected to be found on the site from just from normal building collapses, from a, from a normal building fire. All of them. How about this all one? of them. Uh, chips that are sixteenth of an inch long, uh, uh, that are uh, that, that that have the the unignited thermite uh, in them. This is high tech stuff. Uh, nano-sized particles of iron and aluminum. This is not a product that's found in any office uh, furniture, office uh, whatsoever. Uh, we we have again potassium, manganese, iron, aluminum, and, and this is extremely explosive stuff that's found by uh, that that's only recently been uh, produced in papers by Lawrence Livermore Lab, Los Alamos. This stuff is not made in a cave in Afghanistan. Uh, it, it, we know the source of the iron-rich microspheres because they're partially attached to these, uh, uh, these tiny uh, chips found in all, every sampling of dust that Dr. Jones and others have found now. Glad to address that, Richard. You're right. They're not made, these chips uh, of uh, that iron-bearing material are not made in a cave in Afghanistan. They're made in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania by the Pittsburgh Paint Company. They're made in Kansas City, Missouri by the Tenemec Paint Company. Uh, one thing that that's why they're extremely explosive, I suppose. One thing that should that should uh, ring a bell is that they look exactly like all the primer paint that's on the structural steel, and in fact, they're described as these eggshell-like chips. There's a gray side to them also. Do you, what is that gray side, Richard? It appears to be some sort of binder. It's it's right, it is a, it is a binder. It's the, it's now, the other side. All of the, Richard, let me finish. Oh. All of the ingredients in those chips are in the primer paint. This information is in the NIST report. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, they, they, they look like sulfur. paint chips. No reason for sulfur being in there or aluminum or indeed uh, there indeed there is, Richard. If you not, read if you read nano-sized particles that are indeed there is, Richard. If you if you read or do as I do and contact the paint companies, they can tell you what's in them. But NIST even tells you what's in, in some of these paints. All of these things are 36% uh, 
iron oxide in the pigment of the World Trade Center structural steel paint. May, may I bring up a point that one of the reasons we're able to have a discussion about what this the residue or signature signifies is because the other side, the 9-11 uh, truth investigating side, was able to get some portion of, of, of some of the, the uh, debris from some of the buildings. Um, almost all of it was unavailable to independent researchers. Not true. Apart from, Not true. Apart from, from what I got to the Dr. Stephen Jones. Uh, uh, Thomas Cahill in, in California. Mm -hmm. Lots and lots of people have studied the dust because they were doing health studies. Mm -hmm. Lots of people have. The dust that Richard's talking about was collected uh, most of it well after the events. People are oh. doing doing torts. We're not, doing talk, about not just talking about the dust. I'm talking about actual this is steel, what we're talking steel about. stuff This is what we're talking building. about. A few pancakes, that's all I'm asking for. Argument. Now, we're going to talk about uh, how these buildings came down. I have with me 110, uh, I have a 95-story building. I have two 15-story buildings that I'm going to drop. I'm holding them up. I'm going to drop them at the same time. This is going to show that we have uh, what's, what, accounts, what amounts as a virtual free fall speed, unimpeded, uh, as I'm dropping the 15-story building over nothing at all on one side and over a 95-story building on the other. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, my God. The one that had no resistance under it falls at free fall speed. What happens over here? The one that has 80,000 tons of structural steel on it, it doesn't even give. It resists and is met by an equal and opposite reaction known as the conservation of momentum. It doesn't fall. You can see these technical papers on our website, ae911truth.org, and it is incredible. It shows that this building should never have collapsed. I'd like to address that real, and real quickly. I can do yes, and seconds. just a real quick one statement of mine, because we're running out of time again, is that I don't see it being necessary that Building 7 collapsed if it was a, a controlled demolition in the same, ex it was set up to be in the same exact fashion as buildings one and two, if they were collapsed by controlled demolition. Uh, and, and therefore to compare the two and witness descriptions compared to the two, uh, it, you know, it, it might be inappropriate because it I'm may have been done by slightly the, different I'm mechanisms. I'm not the one claiming that they're both signs of controlled demolition, <laughs> Richard is. But, but what Richard does in his, which is again deceptive in his presentations, he takes a, a video clip from